about Batman the Killing Joke, right? So Batman the Killing Joke is one of those animated movies that everybody has kind of been wanting to see for quite some time, and now it finally is here. People are saying it's one of the best DC animated movies of all time. Some people are saying it's kind of disappointing just in general. So where does it stack up for me? For me, just in general, it is not one of the best DC animated movies of all time, but I would say it is one of the best of recent. It's a good movie. Not a great one, just in general. Now, for me personally, just in general, one of the best things about this film is that it is faithfully adapted from the book. And I mean, like, to a T. The last two thirds of the movie is pretty much right out of the fucking book, or the graphic novel, pretty much. And I think that's actually quite cool to see um, because they actually do a pretty good job. Now, granted, even though it's faithfully, there are some things in the book that doesn't really translate that well on screen. Sometimes I feel like the film does kind of become a little bit boring. Uh, hell, even Joker says, you know, this wasn't supposed to be boring, whatever it may be. So I thought that was actually, you know, something. But it does kind of become a little bit boring towards, uh, like, the end a little bit. But it picks up in a good way. Now, after the disaster, that was kind of like Jason Omar's Batman run. Look, whether you like him or not, that's just your opinion. But for me, I'm not a big fan of Jason Omar's Batman. So it was good to see, like, the OG Kevin Conroy kind of coming back. And same thing with Mark Hamill. Because I think about their relationship especially in the film and also for just them in general is just that these guys have been doing it for you know for over 20 years or whatever it may be so seeing them kind of have their on-screen relationship which is Batman and Joker and kind of their off-screen relationship which is Kevin and Mark is actually a very cool thing because they're the only two voice actors that have actually been doing it that long and actually have had a, both a good on-screen and off-screen relationship uh, which actually kind of makes it very cool and like the very end when then a spoiler three two one they kind of like laugh together. It's kind of a nice and touching way for some reason. You wouldn't have expected it, but it was kind of like an emotional thing just in general. I do think they kind of deliver on some of the emotional moments of the book quite well, uh, you know, uh, more than others sometimes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, just in general. What I did personally like is that even though they gave Backer a bigger part, and that's actually nice to see because she was a bit of a plot point for the most part, I feel as if, just in general, um, I did like the relationship between Batman and Batgirl. There was one scene on a rooftop before they like bang it out. Um, pretty much it's just that... Um, he's kind of saying that you are my partner, but you're not my equal. He pretty much says you haven't had that day where you just don't care anymore. You're not willing to go to the edge of the earth. It's only about the thrill. So I did really personally just like that just in general. And though I thought that was actually um, quite cool to see because it really did sum up what Batman was. Uh, I thought the animation was actually quite good. Some of the action scenes are actually quite fluent. I'm not a big fan of CGI animation. I like hand drawn. So I think they actually transferred well. Um, you know how everybody like looked just in general. The voice acting is great overall. I, I didn't personally like the guy that did. Jim Gordon, I didn't really, I, I just didn't feel connected to his voice at all. I felt like he was the worst of the worst. He didn't really fit. Um, but that was just my point just in general. Now, let's go to some of the negatives just in general in this movie. It's just that, as I said, sometimes it does get a little bit boring. The fact that Barbara is a bigger part in this thing, and that's cool to see. Unfortunately, her part is way worse written. It is just completely shitty written, uh, completely shitty writing when it comes to her character just overall because I feel like the way to kind of make her character be like it's almost like the killing joke kind of takes place during that time of month because she's like clingy she's like uptight she's you know all over the place she's happy she's sad whatever it may be now granted I did kind of like as I said the relationship between Batman and Batgirl but then they kind of take a little step further now granted people are kind of blowing this shit out of proportion the fact that they had sex it's like a five second scene and it's not even anything there the rated R their R rating really didn't do shit for me personally uh, it's like Dawn of Justice, not taking the jab, John of Justice, this the R rating, but I just feel like it really didn't do anything. And then the sex scene just felt a little bit out of place. They try to set up that they're kind of like a boyfriend, girlfriend type of thing. I feel like they try to add some like abusive slight stuff in there, which was like subtle subtext of like abuse of, of sorts. If you really paid attention, I just feel like it just didn't work. It came across as like Tim, Bruce Tim's like weird sex fan fiction and just it just didn't come across as very well or some like weird sex cartoon from japan where they have like barbara gordon nude and she's being fucked up the ass by batman it just didn't really come across well and then they ruined the essence of what batman and batgirl is which is a father-daughter relationship or even a, a older brother and little sister relationship it just came across as awkward and the fact that the first third of this movie which is the batgirl thing which is exciting for the most part but it's just horribly written for batgirl it just feels completely disconnected to the last two thirds of the movie and then if you're not a big fan of the killing joke just in general i feel like you may feel like this movie is a little bit just kind of off because i feel like you're not really that connected with the characters if you know your shit about batman bad girl everybody then you're going to really enjoy it especially if you read the book but overall i feel like it's a really good thing i just feel like they do a shitty job by the way when the sex thing does happen at first i was about to say wow i guess we're going to see the return of some bat nipples but uh no sadly not she just takes up the shirt and that's kind of it uh, but overall, I think it's a very good, um, 
the DC animated movie. It's not perfect. It's not great. But I think it is one of the best ones as of recently. And it's good to see Kevin Conroy and Mark Carroll and even Tara Strong do a fantastic job of their voice acting roles. Uh, and I said this before. You do kind of feel sad for the Joker. But overall, it's hard to feel sad for a guy that's fucking just paralyzed a chick. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. But that's my thought. That's what I actually enjoyed about the thing. I thought it was actually a pretty good animated movie. The voice acting, the animation, uh, the faithfully adaptations, the references, all of that kind of combined together. But it is what it is. Comment, subscribe, and like if you actually enjoyed this review. I'm Chris Smith, and I'm signing out.